So here you see, I have recovered, at great personal risk, the Koenig Journal Whoa. from the Land of the Lost. Um, wait, wh what? I was river rafting. What? When an earthquake struck. I don't it think... It was perhaps the greatest earthquake ever known. No. Hold no. on. No. You couldn't find a sleeve stack action. I couldn't action. find a sleeve no. stack okay. action figure, no. You've been using those Mego monster figures <sighs> to do your drawings. Yeah, and I would have loved to have found a Mego style sleeve stack. Yeah. But I don't think they exist. I don't know if they're out there. Yeah. Well, maybe somebody will send us one. Maybe. Uh, my one of our tens of fans yeah. has one. Yeah. <laughs> um, regardless, I'm drawing a sleeve stack. Okay. Because we're drawing monsters. And I just want to draw a sleeve stack because they scared me. Yes. When I was a kid. They're scary. You and I recently, within the last couple years, right? Yes. We watched the entire Land of the Lost series. Yeah. From the 70s. Right. The original. The original. Uh, we ha I have the DVD set. Mm hmm And you know what? Even as an adult, I was left a little confused. A little bit. Like, I don't know all of the secrets of the Land of the Lost. Right. It's confusing. So I don't know how I, I went through it as a kid. Yeah, I Without think, losing my mind. I know. I think I like the dinosaurs and the Chaka. Chaka Lai. Chaka Lai. I loved the Slee Stack. They scared yeah, me, they but really I loved did. them. Yeah, me too. But honestly, I think that Land of the Lost was some of the, the, the finest sci-fi TV that the 70s yeah. could offer. I, think I mean, so they too. had a lot of good stuff back then, but this was really heady stuff. It was. And aimed at kids. Yeah, Saturday mornings, right? Yeah. And in fact, in honor of Saturday mornings and the 70s and the Slee Stack, <laughs> I put together this creepy synthesizer 70s music bed for us to talk over. Yeah, it's very Land of the Lost. It is. Yeah. But this isn't just a Land of the Lost video this time. We're reviewing these pilot brush pens that I got. Yeah. The uh, Shinpitsu Fine Bristle Brush Pen. The Shinpitsu Medium Bristle Brush Pen. By the way, I asked someone how to pronounce it, and that's what they told me. <laughs> so if I got it wrong, I'm sorry. But also the Pocket Brush Pen from Pilot. And just for giggles, the Zebra Brush Pen. Nice. Because someone suggested I give that a try. So I'm just going to ink the Slee Stack with just these four pens. Okay. We'll see how it turns out. Right. Can I just say that the Slee Stack are very scary? Oh my gosh, they've always been scary. And they yeah. sound scary, Yeah. and they move scary. Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, I'm pretty sure that there was a professional basketball player named Bill Lambeer, and I think he was a Slee Stack. Really? Yeah, I, I don't know if it was during his time as a basketball player Wow. or whatever. So they're very tall. They're very tall, yeah. They're like six, nine, seven, they might be 12 feet tall. Oh my they gosh. Seemed, <laughs> they seemed 12 feet tall when I was a kid. Right. But that's part of what made them so scary. Not that you're anti-tall. No, no, not at all. So the first thing I wanted to do was see what kind of thin to thick line these brush pens could produce for me. Okay. Uh, I like using tech pens to do hatching a lot yeah. when I ink. But these brush pens were actually really good at producing a, just a very, very fine line. Oh, that's good. I, I'm out of practice with brushes, so that's why I'm starting with the brush pens. And, you know, I'm a little clunky with the brushes. Okay. But they have a really good feel. And if I think a more practiced hand could produce even better results with these because it's nice black ink. Yeah. Very, very black. And they give you a nice, organic, variable weight line. That's really nice. So yeah, you put these together, you have to take off that little safety ring. Yeah. And then squeeze the ink out of the barrel, down into the bristles. Okay. Oh, there it comes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but there's, I almost blew it because it wasn't going down into the bristles right away. Uh, no. And it was bubbling out. Okay. But I eventually, eventually by shaking the brush oh, and good. squeezing the handle or barrel, I got the ink down. Ah, there it is. And it makes a really nice line. That is nice. I, I Yeah, I recommend it for all of that really expressive line work. Anytime you need to inject a little life into your lines. I couldn't do that with a tech pen or even any of the other brush pens that I use. This gives you a really nice, very fine, thin line. Yeah. And then a very, very thick, heavy line. Oh, that is nice. All in the thin. same brush stroke. Yeah, it's That's really nice. nice. Speaking of Land of the Lost, by the way, I read an interview from just a couple of years ago okay. with Spencer Milligan, the uh, guy that played Rick Marshall, the dad. Yes. 
Yeah. Who I always liked in that role. He I'm was sorry great. that he left after the second I season. I know, me too. I heard it was a, a merchandising snafu, uh, like they weren't giving him his fair cut. That's a shame. Yeah. Anyway, uh, he went on to have another acting career and, and do all kinds of different things. Yeah. And so he kind of didn't forget about Land of the Lost, but it was just a small part of his career. Right. So somebody, there was a sci-fi convention or something in his town just a couple of years ago, and they asked him if he wanted to appear. Yeah. And he wasn't even sure why. <laughs> but he showed up, and the fans, the throngs of fans, yeah. really made him feel good. Oh, he good. signed tons of autographs that day. That's great. Yeah. He was amazed that this little project he had worked on was so loved by so many people. Oh, that's sweet. It is. All right, so here I am practicing. The pilot pens, they claim to dry to the touch huh? after one second. Nice. So this is some real-time smooth. Ooh. Boy, that's... A little smeary. Yeah. I tried it again. Okay. Like I said, the new pilot, Shinpitsu, is supposed to dry to the touch, they say, after one second. Now, maybe I was a little rushed. Okay. Maybe I, I rushed it. So I tried it again, and I actually wrote out the words, one second. Okay. And then I That's took my touch. sweet old time to recap <laughs> my pen, reach up, and smudge oh. it. That's too bad. <laughs> yeah. Maybe not one second. So maybe a few seconds. Maybe a few seconds. But I'll tell you what, it's all about protecting your art. You know, like, I guess you don't want to smudge while you're drawing. Right. You know, the, the person that let me know about these pens, Pat McEwen, Ink Puddle. Oh, yeah. He thought that these pens might be interesting for doing con sketches. Right, okay. You know, because you're always in a rush. Yeah. And you have to get them dried quickly so you can hand, hand them, them off. off. Yeah. And... You see, I'm drawing a Bigfoot here. Yeah, good test. As I might do at a con. And I'll tell you right. what, it worked. I didn't smudge a single hair. Oh, that's great. So, yeah. so if you're careful where your hand is. Yeah, and I know you can't always be careful. Right. But as you see, if you're just a little bit slower yeah. with the smudge test, okay. it's perfectly fine. Good. So yeah, I would give Pilot, I would say that they could say maybe dries in two to two and a half seconds. <laughs> At least that's what I'm finding. Right, okay. But that's it, good to know. in practice, when you're drawing a character, like I am, uh -huh. uh, they didn't present a problem at all. They're oh, really that's nice. Good. Yeah. The ink is a nice black, even in bright light. I will say this about the ink, though. Uh, oh, by the way, this is the, the pocket pen. The oh, Shinpitsu okay. pocket pen. Oh, oh! It's a little bit of a smudge, but I'll tell you, if you just wait just a little longer, Okay. Before you go mucking with it. Right. It's going to be fine. However, I did read that the ink is not water resistant. Oh, so don't lick it. No, don't lick, <laughs> don't lick the ink. <laughs> but that shouldn't be a problem for most artists. Okay. <laughs> um, oh, and you know what? I did, I did the smudge test with the zebra pen as well. Yeah. Which performed fantastically. I like it. I'll use the zebra pen again. Uh-huh. Uh, it's very similar to those... Furanasuk pens that I uh, use. I don't yeah. know how to pronounce any of these words. Right. But Zebra doesn't claim any sort of drying time record. Okay. But uh, and they smudge, yeah, but who, yeah. who cares? <laughs> Still, smudge or not, I would suggest getting those pilot pens. Yeah. I really like the feel of them, and I can't wait to use them again, and I think they look pretty good on this Lee Stack drawing. Yeah, they do. They look really nice. I thought that I would have trouble not having my tech pens at hand uh -huh. to work on all that hatching on the leaves, but you can see that, yeah, maybe these brush pens, the pilot pens, don't get down as tiny a line, or maybe as controlled a line as a tech pen, but it's pretty darn close. Yeah, it is. It's I'm good. I'm really looking forward to using these again. Yeah, and the areas of dark ink look really nice too. Yeah, the black, the yeah. big spot blacks went down really nicely, and even in bright light, it's a nice deep flat black. You know, I had a power outage right before I started videoing this. Okay. And so I had to work, much like the artists of the 70s, by sunlight. <laughs> You know they had electricity back then, right? I, may, I guess they did. Yes, of course. But they were also really into nature right. and the sun. So there's your slee stack. Nice. From the land of the lost, lost, lost. 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 Grumpy? No, that's dopey. 